Joe Crispin. I tell you, if you're if you're Ohio State, you can't give Crispin, Grays, or Lasicki room to breathe out there on the three-point arc. And next year, expected to add Dan Earl back to right. the mix, assuming yes, things are okay. Red off the dribble misses. Penn State runs and tries to get the lead. Oh boy, that and was a foul underneath. Stevens is okay. What a nice example of Jared Stevens' agility. He got, you know, he's he looks like a a tackle or a tight end. Here you'll see a nice outlet. Good run out by Penn State. Kick ahead to Jarrett. Puts it on the floor against Red. Almost gets a three point opportunity. That's 255 pounds of motion there, Bruce. Mm -hmm. He's, he, he has really got great skills for his size and strength. Great hands. He put the ball on the floor. He talked about his inside moves earlier. He's a player. And that player, Big Ten Co Player of the Week, is already up to nine points. And we have another TV timeout. And we're tied once again. Actually, Penn State has regained the lead by one. We're watching Big Ten basketball. We're back in Columbus. Penn State's first lead since it was 3-0. This game has been tied four times. To get inside the huddle of your favorite Big Ten team, go online at www.bigten.org for all the basketball and conference news from around the Big Ten. And I imagine... That'll be hopping as we get into the conference tournament, which begins Thursday in Chicago. At the home of the Bulls. What can you make of the numbers so far, Bruce? Anything? Well, you know, you have to be uh, pretty happy if you're Ohio State with, with the way you're shooting the basketball. Just not real happy with the score right now. Both teams, like I said earlier, both teams are playing pretty well. Nice set play. Great backdoor. Jason Singleton helps Ohio State regain the lead with three and a half minutes to go in the first half. Way too early to call, but if this is an indication back and forth, we could have one that goes down to the final in closing seconds. Now that would be fitting. I think it will be too. And I really expect game. that kind of game. In the first game, Jared Stevens and Calvin Booth were really a factor inside. Jared has been a factor. Although really not from the standpoint of pounding the ball inside to him. He's done it. He's gotten his points other ways. Again, Penn State running out of time. Again, a three from the outside. This time by Grays, who lit up Michigan early this season in Ann Arbor with threes. He can shoot it. Well, we've seen the shot clock down to the final seconds on three occasions and twice. There you go. Penn State's been able to get threes, but Ohio State comes back with a two. Nice stick back by Hannah. Crowd loving that. That'll be something he'll remember. So he not only gets a start tonight, the walk-on senior, he gets uh, some quality time. Penn State's doing a really nice job of getting the defense to lunge and moving the basketball and getting open shots. Davis penetrating Singleton. Hannah almost got the follow. And Grace runs the court against Davis. Well, I'll tell you one, one thing. Ohio State is going to have to do at halftime, or maybe even in this timeout, is get their floor bounce back on offense. Penn State has got a lot of run out so far in the first half. 20 second timeout with 2.10 to go in the first half. Jim O'Brien's team, regardless of what happens tonight, will finish last in the Big Ten, will be the 11th seed, and will play Thursday night the Opponent still to be determined. What we know of is this: Northwestern Minnesota gets to see each other again, Bruce. Yeah, and uh, everything else is up in the air. Mm -hmm. Depending on what happens between Iowa and Indiana, Indiana could drop all the way down to number six. Penn State could move up to number six. If Iowa wins, it really doesn't matter what happens for Penn State. Although they obviously want to win the game, Penn State would be in the seventh position mm -hmm. and would see Wisconsin on Thursday. So I hope all of you at home have got that. There'll be a quiz on that a little later. <laughs> sure is fun, though, to talk about a tournament before the big tournament. Yeah, it really is. I think it's going to be a real exciting event for everybody involved with the Big Ten. I know the uh, ticket sales have been terrific and a lot of excitement up in the Windy City. And the players are excited. Well, and Jerry Dunn said yesterday, 
at State College. The beauty of it is right now, and General Bryan, the same thing. Right now, we might be talking about next year. Of course, Penn State still has a, an NIT opportunity. But most of the focus could be on next season. Instead, it's, hey, you get hot in the That's tournament, right. maybe you get through. That's the great thing about a postseason tournament. There are a lot of good things about it, but but one of the great things is if you have teams has have injuries or a young team a team that's been struggling but getting better like Ohio State you always have something to shoot for there's always that light at the end of the tunnel. Well the good news for Michael Red is he's been in the line eight times the bad news is it's only hit 50 percent. And tonight Ohio State around their average or a little less it's six of twelve but they're getting opportunities that's a good sign for them. It could catch up to him though in a close game. That'll really hurt them. Anna tried to take a charge. And then Jim O'Brien said that can't be the right call. Well, let's see if we can get a look at it. Pete hitting Jarrett coming down. Boy, that was that was tough. It, it looked like he might have been sliding just a little bit with his right knee there to the right. Well, Brian can't believe what was called. Let's let you decide once again. Yeah, he was moving in there right at the end. Didn't quite have his position established. Well, <laughs> as it turns out, Hannah is shooting. <laughs> and now Jerry Dunn would like to. An explanation. I guess I wouldn't mind I guess, one either. I guess Jimmy O'Brien talked him into it. <laughs> That's a first. Yeah. Well, O'Brien and the fans' reaction was here. It was a blocking foul on Hannah. Instead, it was a charge on Penn State. Yeah. Free throws for Ohio State. I think they got it right the first time. Yeah. Another lead change. This time, Ohio State by one. I woke up the fans. Yeah. Crispin trying another three way short on that one. And now he'll get the air ball tag until he nails one. That won't bother him. Red tried to finish, gets his own rebound. And a foul on Calvin Booth or Jarrett Stevens. I think they might have got Pete Lasicki on a reach in. I think you're right, it is Lasicki. Well, right Buckeyes. now Ohio State doesn't have a real big man in the game. I'd like to see Penn State try to pound it down into Jared Stevens or Calvin Booth. See if they can do something to get either one of those guys real deep position and take it to the rack. Michael Red who moments ago became the Big Ten scoring champion. Now has 12 points five of those from the free throw line. There's Quadro Steele in the game wearing 55. And the freshman John Sanderson who has seven gets a breather. Well nothing's easy for the Buckeyes at the free throw line but Red got both of those. Around the bowl and down the hole. Yep. Now the crowd will try to help out the Buckeyes playing in the final game at St. John. Where Steele was all over Lasicki. They probably told him when he go in the game, stick to Lasicki like glue, and he did. He sure did. Again, I'd like to see Penn State try to jam it in there. Well, that would appear to be the big advantage Penn State has coming in the front line. Right. And yet have been unable to use it. Calvin Booth just right. three shots, four points. He really hasn't gotten the ball. The times he's gotten the ball in pretty good position. Ohio State's done a nice job of doubling down on him and making. He's, they've made him give it up. And Jared Stevens hasn't really gotten the ball down on the block where he can wheel and deal too much. As we said earlier, up in State College, both those guys were a big factor in the game. Pete Lasicki fourth in the conference at three point shooting, as you saw the numbers earlier. Yeah, I guess if you can't get it down inside and go to the foul line, you'd like to have this guy shooting fouls. Sure. Money in the bank, usually. A minute even for the first half. Ohio State by one, and now the Buckeyes will use a 20-second timeout. 
Not much breathing room tonight. One team gets a two point lead, the other team regains the lead by one. We're telling you opening night and opening day, three games in Chicago, the playing round, for lack of a better term. And then we get to the quarterfinals. The right side of your screen, coach, four pretty good teams. Really good teams. You know, Michigan's playing really good right now. Michigan State's had a great year. I really like Illinois. Purdue is a little on a little bit of a downtick right now, but it, I think Illinois, with their experience and their athleticism, is a team who could really give some people headaches when they get in the NCAA tournament. Speaking of Purdue, Boilermakers finish their season tomorrow in East Lansing. If Purdue upsets Michigan State, Illinois gets a share of the league title. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't happen, Michigan State wins it outright. I hope uh, they can get Cornell back. I think that's been a big loss for them. His shooting uh, has really been important for Purdue's success this year. The number one three-point shooter in the conference, John Cornell. That falls on Calvin Booth, and guess what? Back to the line. Ohio State 16 tries already from the line. Penn State has 13. Once again, an adventure for number 23 from the stripe. Ooh, almost there. Yeah. You know, that, that, that used to drive me nuts, among many other things, as a coach. You've got guys who've been playing basketball most of their lives, and not to be able to shoot a decent percentage at the foul line is, to me, inexcusable. All it is is, is working on mechanics a little bit and then just practice. Well, he must have heard you. He's got a nice rotation on the ball, too. It's, uh, I think it's something he could do well. Penn State will not have the ball last unless they can get off the shot in the next 10 seconds or so. Underneath the Booth, put it up. No, Crispin. And Booth over the back. Tough break for Penn State. Boy, it really was. Two good opportunities to knock down a bucket there and they end up with a foul. Penn State will get the ball last, but Ohio State gets free throws, and Calvin Booth now gets his second foul. Hanna did a good job of coming over and disrupting Calvin Booth's shot. Joe K Crispin might have been well advised to just get possession of the ball and stick it back or dribble it back out and reset the O. Nobody in any serious foul trouble as we speak. Which is amazing considering all the fouls. Well, they them. have been spread out all over the yeah. place. Everybody but team managers, I think, <laughs> picked him up tonight. Well, how, how about, about this young fella? I, you know, yeah. we great minds think alike. <laughs> I was just going to ask you. Really, it's it's really neat to see. Well, you love to see a guy who's going to walk on and it's last night. And he's really, really making a nice contribution to his club. He's got five points. He averages a point a game, just a few minutes, and he's got five already. Leaves one at the line, and now the last shot should go to Penn State. As the possession clock is off, Crispin's got an open look and went inside. And Penn State will get free throws. Thought Crispin might shoot it. Instead, he thought better, went inside, and now we got free throws for Penn State. Well, I think Crispin was going to shoot it, and then Ohio State really jumped out and closed out on him. And he did a nice job of reacting to that, trying to hit the open man in the post. And so Jim O'Brien's team after the free throws, assuming they get the rebound, or if it's made, will have a chance to kill the clock. Sarah Stevens has been doing a really nice job at the free throw line, the free throw line the last several games. You know, it's interesting. He's at 71% for the year, and, and compared to Ivory and Crispin Wasicki, who are over 90%, that doesn't sound like a big deal, but those numbers are picking up at the right time. You said it. Fun game to watch so far in the finale for St. John Arena. Running their delay game here. Penn State. Got to hold their ground here and come up with a good stop. Bit of a clear out for Red who tries to move her inside. Boy, a nice shot. He's got a tough shot to block. He holds it behind his head and goes up high on the elevation. Super player. He's the Big Ten scoring champion. He's got 15 points in the first half. And after one half, Ohio State 39 and Penn State 36. We'll relive some special moments at St. John Arena. You're watching Big Ten basketball. 
Jim Barber, Bruce Parkhill, still anybody's game. Ohio State leading 39-36 behind 15 points. Star of the future, Michael Red. Time for us, though, Bruce, to, to look back at the great ones who have played in St. John Arena, dating back to the 1st of December, 1956. I'm really looking forward to this. I've been looking forward to this game for quite a while, Jim. Seeing a lot of guys who I admired when I was growing up a couple years ago. Frank Howard was a big star here, and uh, Jerry Lucas, he had a career, didn't he? Boy, I'll tell you, unbelievable career. They'd like to have him right now, I'll bet you. And that wonderful photographic memory where he could memorize where shots were going to go as they were missed yeah. from the opposition. They won a national championship here in the 60s, and Hondo had something to do with that. Yeah, great career with the Celtics. They invited both of them back tonight, but uh, both have prior commitments, otherwise they would be here. Some guy named Hoskins. Big Bill. Yep. Our broadcasting counterpart. Great guy. I've really enjoyed getting to know Bill. Class, class fella. Jim Clemens, who starred early in the early 70s when uh, it was the wild, wild west in the Big Ten, high-scoring games up in the 80s and 90s. Alan Horniak, who is also a huge star here. At that lefty jumper. Oh, he would have done great with a three-point shot. And CBS analyst Clark Kellogg. A little slimmer back there. Another class act. Mm -hmm. yep. Good man. Terrific player. And Jim Jackson, who is expected to be here tonight, the college player of the year in 1992. What a star-studded group. That have graced St. John Arena. And some of the great ones have come back tonight for the final game. Here in Columbus, Ohio, we'll return in a moment. Biggest lead in this game, six points by the Buckeyes. Right now, it's three at the break. Both teams are back after a great first half of festivities. Wonderful to see Fred Taylor back in the house. Boy, did he get a nice ovation, Jim. He has been in ill health over the last months and a couple years, and I'm sure he was very... Very touched by what he saw and heard Had to here be. at St. John. Yeah, I was really, that was wonderful. Let's take a look at the first half highlights. We've had a bunch of them. A lot of battling on the boards. And Penn State running on the rush. Yeah, this is, a, this is an area where Ohio State's going to have to make an adjustment at halftime and get their floor balance back. Penn State's done a nice job of running out. Nice job of some interior passing there, too. For the Buckeyes, alley-oop there for Ken Johnson, one of his first points, and the walk-on. He's not only been in the first half. Yeah, he scored five points tonight. Big man is Michael Red with 15. He's now the Big Ten scoring champion for this season. They're watching Big Ten college basketball. Has the crowd affected Penn State? Can you tell it all? I don't think so. I think Penn State's doing a really nice job. And if I was Jim O'Brien, I'd be concerned right now because they, they, his team has played well. They shot 50% from the floor. Penn State only shot 41. And Penn State's right here in the hunt. Another thing, too, in the first half, I thought the crowd was on its hands. It wasn't doing very much uh, I of anything. I agree. They, it, it almost seemed like they were waiting to explode. And, and unfortunately, there were so many fouls called that, that I think it, it just really prohibited the the fans from really getting involved. Speaking of fouls, Stevens draws a foul. He'll shoot a couple. Jared Stevens had a very nice first half. He's about set to add to that. He's six for six from the line. And back up what Bruce was saying earlier and how his numbers have really picked up. And as I say that, he misses. <laughs> you know, Joe Crispin and Pete Lasicki combined three for 11 from the floor, and you've got to think that that that'll change, so that should bode well for Penn State. But Ohio State's done a pretty solid job of identifying those guys and closing out on them at, at Ohio State's defensive end. Well, a nice job of double teaming Booth when the ball's yes. gone down low. He hasn't had many touches tonight. Mismatch there, and Booth says, Don't bring that in here. Got to give Hannah credit for even trying. Yeah. Too many times you're going to shoot it over, Calvin. There's one of them. Yeah. And he's a little more adept at doing That's right. it. Reminds me of the old story when Dikembe Mutombo blocks a shot in the NBA to newcomers. They always stare at him and say, You haven't heard of Mutombo? You don't get cable in this area? <laughs> <laughs> I 
There's another block by Calvin Booth, and he's starting to work up his to his to his average. Well, you know he wants to play well. This is his hometown, and got a lot of friends and family here watching. Just 10 blocks behind, now eight behind Brad Sellers, all-time numbers at Ohio State. You know, like his chances for, for moving past Brad. Oh yes. 20 on the shot clock, Ohio State by four and with the ball. Boy, they're really stagnant offensively now. There's not any movement in their offense. It doesn't look like they're going to get off a good shot at this point. Davis tries to create. Got it to Hannah, got that swatted away again. Three blocks consecutively by Booth. And again, strong to the basket. Another, another run out. Another run out situation. John Sanderson is the second, team's third. Well, despite the lopsided loss to Michigan, Jerry Dunn feels Penn State's got a legitimate crack at winning the Big Ten tournament, even if it's got to go four games in four days. I agree with I agree with him because if you look at their personnel, they have a strong player at every position. They have one of the best way of the best shot block in the league at center, and Calvin can score. They have one of the best three point shooters in the country, and people sick They have one of the best freshman players in the Big Ten, and Joe Crispin. Jared Stevens is one of the best forwards in the country. Titus Ivory is a heck of a role player. We got Greg Grace coming off the bench who can shoot it. Got, you know, they've got some talented kids. Indiana and Iowa are in the second half with the Hawkeyes leading by three. And Iowa win and Indiana moves down to the sixth position to take on Ohio State next Thursday. And Penn State will take on Wisconsin seven against ten. Tonight for Michael Red. Can this young fella get his shot? Yes. Boy, oh boy. And that second win that Jim O'Brien has talked about seems to really be benefiting the freshman. Yeah, look at his athleticism. Great jump stop, then he elevates over the defense, extends the ball away from the defense, and still makes a basket when he's getting fouled. And he got Titus Ivory into foul problems. That's his third. Here's one of the few weak links about his game, and I'm sure that will get better. The free throw line. You know, one of the things that makes him so hard to guard and, and really is one of the uh, attributes to his ability to score is the fact that he slings the ball behind his head. It's very difficult to stop that, but it's also something that hurts him at the foul line because mechanically that is not the best shot. It's a good point. I would imagine that'll be something that O'Brien may address. When they get into next season, he said he'll work a lot on free throw shooting, but you know, I think with a guy like Red, you really just have to have him practice that shot because it's such an advantage for him to be able to go inside the way he can handle the ball and elevate and then put the ball behind his head. I don't know if you want to change his shot as such, but, but you can still change a foul shot. And I'm not sure I'd want to do that if I'm Jimmy. Just maybe have him shoot a couple hundred a day and Hope that that works out for him. Well, the graphic doesn't lie. Ohio State's getting into foul trouble quickly. Five fouls in two minutes. Booth looking for a foul down low. Throws up a soft hook. Good job to get it in there, though. That's what Penn State has to, to do, I think, because Ohio State's covering the perimeter. Crispin a little out of control. Coleman on the break. Well, that time, Penn State didn't have floor balance on their offense. Joe Crispin penetrated, and nobody recovered back to help out. This is Ohio State's biggest lead. And another Penn State turnover. Nice conversion there. Nice move by Davis to avoid Pete Lissicki on the run out. Finally, something in St. John for the fans to cheer about. Good timeout by Jerry Dunn. Get the troops reorganized here, refocused. Got a couple of sloppy turnovers. This half began 39-36 Ohio State, but suddenly after Penn State had almost a flawless first half of turnovers, they're getting a bit sloppy. Yeah, yeah. Here Pete Wasicki doesn't test his pass. Carlos Davis was hanging back, ready for it, and does a nice job of finishing on the run out. A 7-0 Ohio State run. One advantage, though, for Penn State is fouls. They're right. shooting very well from the line, and they're just two Ohio State fouls away from the bonus the rest of the game. Big factor. Big factor, and, and the fact that you mentioned earlier, too, is Ohio State now getting in some foul trouble, and they're not deep at all. 
Here Ohio State's a little 1 3 1. If Penn State's patient and works inside out, they'll get a good shot against this. Buckeyes okay. changing up defenses. Wosicki for three. See, against that defense, if you can get the ball inside and make the defense collapse, the perimeter will, perimeter will be wide open. But Penn State worked it around the perimeter that time and didn't make the defense collapse. Peak got a shot, but it really wasn't an open look. He got an earlier three to start the game from about 30 feet, and that's been the only three he's hit, Coach. Yeah, yeah he very rarely gets open shots. People really do a good job of trying to take his three-point shot away. Skip pass to Coleman. Then the ball skips away from him, knocked out of bounds by Penn State. 17 seconds on this possession. Look, Calvin Booth, the Calvinator. Calvinator. He had three blocks in about 20 seconds in this half. Well, you know, other teams are, are thinking about him. They're driving at the basket. Even if he's not there, they, they know he's around somewhere. Like Anna right there. Had to use the backcourt. <laughs> Boy, he's having a career tonight. I'll tell you what, he's Ohio State's secret weapon. Yeah. <laughs> now people are going to be on Jimmy O'Brien saying, why haven't you played this guy more? <laughs> you can't win when you're coaching. <laughs> it's the old line when uh, Gene Cady's Boilermakers would lose at home, which was rare. And somebody who grew up in the state of Indiana had a big game against them. Everybody say, hey, how come you didn't recruit that guy? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everybody's always second guessing, but Hannah's oh, having yeah. a, a night for the ages. And the fans are loving it. Nice pass. Look at the reverse layup. This kid is, uh, he must be dreaming. Calvin Booth has got to get, Calvin Booth has got to get deeper position. He's got a mismatch. He's got Hannah guarding him. Penn State's got to get him down lower and work the basketball around until they get the advantage, until they can exploit that mismatch. He's the man of the hour. He's a senior walk-on. Eric Hanna and family enjoying a 13-point Ohio State lead. The lead has gone from three to 13 for Ohio State on the strength of Michael Red and the Eric Hanna show. And if you're at home saying Eric who? <laughs> well, good penetration by Davis and Hanna says, I'll go up against the big man again. Kiss that one off the glass. No disrespect meant to Jerry Dunn, but I'll bet Hanna wasn't a major part of the scouting report this week. No, no question about that. Now, now, Ohio State has done a good job of guarding Penn State on the perimeter. What Penn State has to do is counter that now. And then, if Ohio State traps inside, you're going to get a kick out for an open shot. Got to use a little patience, but they have to work inside out. They can't Spe just throw it around the perimeter. Well, especially since the three-point shooting has not been strong tonight. Now, there, is been, there has been a strong part of their game, and that is drawing fouls. And this is a shooting situation. And after this, one in bonus for the last 15 minutes. Yeah, that, that's good for Penn State. This was a good possession out of the timeout. Penn State moved the ball around. Greg Stevenson got a nice penetration, moved to the basket, drew the foul. At that time, Penn State moved the ball. They got it inside to Calvin. Calvin kicked it back out. They continued to move it until they got a good opportunity. Interesting free throw ritual for Stevenson. Yeah. He kind of spins the ball and then tosses it in. Yeah, his freshman year, he, he did that. And <laughs> I went, holy mackerel, I hope he doesn't ever fumble that thing on the road. <laughs> Fans will crucify him. Not an empty seat to be found in this building tonight. And again, the equalizer for Penn State down by 11. May very well be the line because the Lions are in the bonus the rest of the game. And that's a huge advantage if this thing tightens up. Davis handling for the Buckeyes. Carlos in his final game along with Eric Hanna who has scored nine. Craig Gray's doing a nice job to keep the ball away from Red. And the outside official says Grace was doing too good of a job. But only the second Penn State foul. And Greg Grace has to keep the ball away from Red because if, if Red gets it, He's, you know, he, there's a mismatch there. See if Red posts him up a little bit. There's a size uh, advantage for Red. 
Indiana has charged back now uh, after being down three, a 13 5 run. Ooh. As Red buries a three, he's having a terrific night. Good patience by Ohio State that time. Booth comes right back, a little strong on the reverse. Ohio State with its biggest lead at 55 41. One thing about the Buckeyes, they've been pretty selective about their shots tonight. They, yeah, they really have, Jim. They've done a nice job of shot selection, good execution on their offense. And that's a killer for Penn State. Well, they've got a break there. You don't want to give Ohio State second shots. Well, Sicky tries a three and knocks it home. Just the second three of the night for Pete, who has 10. It's an 11 point game. Carlos Davis to reset the offense for Ohio State using a little clock on this possession. Johnson up against Booth and scores. fellow with the turnaround. And you said earlier you like what Ken Johnson brings to the ballpark. He's got a lot of promise. And for Ohio State, Johnson's a sophomore, Sanderson's a freshman, Coleman's a junior, Red's a freshman, Singleton's a junior. Only bad thing for Ohio State, Hannah's in his final game here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Stevenson, a little shot fake underneath and laid in by, or rather Stevenson, laid in by Stevens. Another good possession by Penn State. They worked it inside. Calvin Booth got double teamed and then he kicked it out and they were able to take advantage of Ohio State scrambling back to their man. Jared Stevens having a nice game tonight for Penn State. He sure is. Now Red works against Stevenson, fading away. And the rebound to Booth. Penn State can get it under 10. And it's a break for Stevenson. Nicely done. Oh, another example of poor floor balance. 20 second timeout, Ohio State. Well, that has happened a number of times tonight for Penn State. We're in Columbus, Ohio for the final game at St. John Arena. I'm Jim Barber along with former Penn State coach Bruce Parkhill. This was a tightly contested game. For the entire first half, then Ohio State blew out to a 14-point lead, but the Lions are starting to work their way back, Coach. They are. They're doing a nice job, I think, offensively, Jim, of starting to go inside. Ohio State's taking Calvin Booth out of the game. You know, they're, they're trying to make him be a passer, which is good strategy. And now Penn State's doing a good job of taking advantage of that, getting it to Calvin, drawing the double team, and then Penn State has numbers. Calvin just one of six on the floor for four points, but he's getting help from Stevens, who's having a right. great month. Penn State's picked up their D a little bit. Singleton penetrating that one, blocked again, and now Penn State can get closer. Fifty seven forty eight Ohio State under 12 minutes for the game. Shot clock getting down to single numbers. As nice Calvin move. Booth brings him closer. Penn State's on a nice little run here. See if they can make a stop. And make a stop here and, and convert. It's going to plan a serious seated down in Ohio State. I think Ohio State made a nice run. Sometimes it's tough to to play that well when your team has been struggling for an extended period of time. And Lasicki draws an offensive foul. That's the fourth on Ken Johnson. And the follow up exactly what you mentioned, Bruce. Serious foul trouble indeed for Ohio State. Yep, that hurts a lot. They don't have an inside presence now, offensively or defensively. The one thing Johnson could provide, even if he's a little bit raw offensively, is a, is a presence inside defensively with his ability to block some shots. And rebound. See if Penn State continues to try to pound it down into Calvin or Jared Stevens. Pete Lasicki, a 91% shooter. 57 51. And Eric Hanna, the bottom of your screen, number 44. I'll bet he never figured <laughs> that he would be in crunch time, but here he is. And despite some poor shooting from the three-point line, the first half Penn State has worked its way back. 
I don't think anybody here thought they'd disappear. No. No, there was way too much time. Penn State's a good team. They came from, you know, they came from 15 down in State College against Ohio State. So they we have an they official timeout. Run. And the 14-point Ohio State lead is down to five. You're watching Big Ten College Basketball. This young man's up beyond his bedtime tonight, but he's seen a good one and partially because Calvin Booth has got it into it defensively. He's got four blocks and he's helped bring Penn State back coach. He really has. He's asserted himself. He always does at the decent defensive end. And uh, you know, he, he's just, he's when, when you have a great shot blocker, your defense automatically steps up a notch. You can take chances on the perimeter. Uh, you can force people to drive, take away their jump shots, knowing that you've got a guy back there who can alter their shots or even block them. But Calvin's made a, uh, a move now on the offensive end, and I think this last 11 minutes, Penn State can really exploit Johnson being in foul trouble. Calvin Booth is the Big Ten block leader by a lot. There's nobody even close to him. If Penn State rallies and wins, and if Indiana defeats Iowa, Penn State will move to the sixth seed and will play Ohio State again on Thursday. Well, and it's looking that's, more and more like Penn State's going to get in position for that. Yeah, that's just really poor defense that time by Ohio State. They had a couple guys in position to be back, and they just fell asleep, and Calvin Booth shows he can run the floor. Well, not too long ago, Ohio State had a 15-point lead at State College. And Penn State came back. A 14-point lead is almost gone here tonight. Penn State's running a switch in defense, which is taking some of uh, Ohio State's cuts off the of screens away, and they haven't really done a good job of countering that. Red draws the double team, but time is running out. Got to force a shot. They almost got it to fall, and Singleton able to save it for the Buckeyes. That's a huge break for Ohio State. Buckeyes flow has gone away offensively. Well, you know, Calvin Booth really doesn't have to guard Hannah, and he's not. He's staying back inside to protect defensively, and that's really uh, allowed Penn State to, to guard the other players pretty tough and know that Calvin's back there to protect. A foul coming up on Sanderson. That's the 19th foul, and Penn State can add to this pretty strong run, which has already reached 10 straight points. Speaking of Sanderson, he's been kind of quiet tonight. Yes, he has. He had 21 points in the, in the game in State College. Well, one television timeout ago, Ohio State was up by 14. And one of the best free throw shooting teams is putting money in the bank right now, up at 83% for the game. And the Lions are not missing. Ohio State has to figure out how to counter Penn State's defense right now at their offensive end. And that's, it looks like it's affecting their intensity at the defensive end. It's a one point game with 9.49 left. A terrific run by Penn State. And now much concern for the Buckeyes here in Columbus. We need to get more active. Davis challenges and scores. That's exactly what they needed. Well, that, that time, Ohio State had the mismatch. They had Davis being guarded by Jared Stevens because Jared, Jared switched off. You'll see here, Jared Stevens is guarding Carlos Davis. And Carlos takes him to the hole. And without Calvin Booth in the lineup, he was able to get it to the basket. So Davis tries to finish the old-fashioned three-pointer. Three-point play. And does a little breathing room for the moment for the home side Bucks. Bucks showing a little zone here. Now that Pete Lasicki and Joe Crispin are out of the game. Calvin Booth also getting a rest. Getting set for the stretch run. Graves out of room, but dish to nice Ryan Hurd who slams Graves. it home. Super job by Greg Graves to draw about three defenders on that drive. I know where his teammate was and gave it to him. All he had to do was make a slam dunk layup. 
Well, that is the 10th team foul on Ohio State. Double bonus rest of the way. Big advantage for Penn State. What a rare miss from Penn State at the line. Now see if Ohio State will take advantage of Calvin Booth being out of the game and try to go to the basket. Because when he's in there, it's very difficult for them to do that. A three. Well, I guess they take a three. Yeah. <laughs> That's a point better than a two. And with that, Calvin Booth will re-enter the game at the next whistle. Ohio State's bumped it back to five. Ivory had a look for the moment. Bucks very active with their zone. Trying to make sure there are no open looks. Stevenson, a little shot fake, drives to the basket. And it just wouldn't oh, go down. Everything would go down. Yeah. So we'll see if Ohio State weathers the storm. It had been reduced to a one-point game. Now it's up to five. Looking for a little backdoor with Red, but he couldn't get loose. Now he penetrates, hangs in the air, scores. Great, great decision that time to drive it into the gut without Calvin Booth in the game. And Booth and Lasicki can't get in until the next whistle. Stevens drives the lane, soft little push, he scores. Stevens has not missed from the floor. Seven and eight from the line. Good night for him. 17 points. Coleman going to try again. Not this time. Way short. Rebound Stevens. Ivory penetrating. Offensive foul. Now that that's a good job by Ohio State. In the last two possessions, they haven't done that. They haven't stepped up and, and backed up their perimeter defense. One of the better defenders on Michael Red has now got four fouls. 7-18 left in a very emotional game at St. John Arena. With the coach, Bruce Parkhill, I'm Jim Barber. We're back in Columbus, Ohio, the final night of basketball in historic St. John Arena. You can go inside the huddle of your favorite Big Ten team. Go online at www.bigten.org for all basketball and conference news from around the Big Ten. The tournament commences Thursday at the United Center in Chicago. And in Iowa City, it's a photo finish tonight. Indiana by one. A barn burner. Indiana win. They'll look at Michigan in the first game on Friday. An Iowa loss and a Penn State win. Penn State goes up to the sixth seed to meet Ohio State again. If Penn State lose. Penn State will look at Wisconsin. And right now, Penn State is only worried about coming back. That was a really nice execution that time by Ohio State. Dangerous cross-court pass, tipped by Davis, still in the hands of the Lions. Booth dishing down low. That one might have got deflected, and yeah. rebound Ohio State. Good defense. Now control in the hands of the Bucks. A little wild right there. And they may get a break. Nope. Sanderson, offensive rebound, and a foul. Boy, great effort by Sanderson that time. Ohio State has done is they haven't become timid despite the four blocks from Calvin Booth. That's and that's exactly what they have to do. You're absolutely right, Jim. They they're just taking it right in there, and, and uh, if he blocks it, so what? And that's that's really good strategy. Sanderson's starting to come alive here a little bit. He was a factor in that, that last possession. I think uh, that deflection you were talking about came from John Sanderson. Now he did a great job on the offensive boards and going to knock down possibly two foul shots. The one point Ohio State lead has ballooned to eight. Sanderson knew he missed it. He was charging after the missed free throw. But an important offensive rebound. Yeah, that's a coach's nightmare. Not just not blocking out. No, that one actually was a long rebound. I think they did a pretty good job of checking out, but it was just a freak rebound. Red has it go down and back out. 
Work to do for Penn State, trailing by eight. Crisper is wide open here. Yes, sir. A big breakdown that time defensively by Ohio State. He got loose. They couldn't find him. He has his second three. And now it's a five point Ohio State lead under six minutes left. Right out high to handle and now back to the point with Davis. You know the one thing that Ohio State can do to counter Calvin Booth laying back in the lane is to have his man screen for a shooter out on the perimeter. Well Red is a shooting guard but he can play the point. Yeah. Yeah have Red dribble off of Calvin Calvin Booth. Man that time Penn State totally broke down and left the guy wide open inside. A little more than five minutes left in the final game at St. John Arena. Crispin looked for the three, penetrates, and nice Alasiki's job. wide open. Terrific job. Terrific job by Penn State to move the ball, penetrate, kick it to their main man. That quieted the crowd a little bit, didn't it? And Penn State's numbers picking up a little coach from the from the arc, seven mm -hmm. to twenty now. We'll see how Ohio State has responded. Obviously, with only one win in the conference, games that have been to the wire, and there have been a few, have been tough for the Bucks to close. Right. Red got a pick from Sanderson. Now penetrates. And Michael Red returns to the free throw line with his 25 points. If I was if I was Jimmy O'Brien, I'd be tempted to, to have the big fella screen for Red. Then Calvin's got to make a decision. Do I go out there and help out or do I still stay back and, and guard the basket? Boy, he's just so good at, at knifing in there and, and getting the shot off. The Big Ten scoring champion leaves the first one uh, short. Stevens has had a, a wonderful night tonight. 17 points, five rebounds. Red missed them both. Out of bounds. That was a bad decision by Heron that time. He should have grabbed the ball and either stuck it back or kicked it back out instead of slapping it. Well, the old Achilles heel of Ohio State starting to rear its ugly head. Free throw shooting. The 11 misses tonight. Ohio State's in that 1-3-1. One, one. If they can work inside out, they'll get a good shot. A basket makes it a one-possession game. That's out of bounds. Belongs to Penn State. 13 on the shot clock and in even four minutes for the game, which means we'll take another break. Jerry Dunn's team has gotten back in position again, trailing by four. From Columbus, you're watching Big Ten Basketball. Still too close to call with Ohio State up by only four. As the lights of St. John Arena will burn for the last time tonight. At the guard spots, this is not a surprise. The key for Penn State is Lasicki is starting to warm up a bit. Yeah, he really is. He's done a lot better job in the second half. And, and also, Red is the main go-to guy. Yep. Almost every possession for Ohio State, where Penn State has other options. Uh, for example, Jared Stevens that they like to go to. If Ohio State loses this game, as you pointed out during the break, Jim, they, they can look no further than the foul line. How Pete Lasicki got open, Ohio State would love to know. A one-point game, and that is Pete with another three-pointer, his fourth of the game. He's got 18. Real nice play coming out of timeout that time by Penn State. Giving Pete a wide open look. Well, the senior is saving his best for last. See, now they have Heron outside on the three-point line. Now he's coming inside, but Jimmy O'Brien, I think I'm going to have him screen. Davis forces a three and hit it. Big shot. I say forces because the shot clock was winding down, and they were looking for Red and couldn't get it to him. Yeah, that is big. Booth comes Calvin right Booth. back. 
Facing up and knocking it down. Galvin now with 10, and Penn State's shooting is becoming almost flawless down the stretch. It's a great ball game, huh? Yeah. We said before this started, I hope we have one that winds down to the end, and it's headed there. Sanderson got loose. Oh, boy. Great cut, great pass. Calvin Booth was sleeping. We're Should have been there to help out on that one. We're trading hoops, coach. Booth out high, look for Lasicki. Now Ivory handles. Stevens draws the double. Somebody's open. And Ivory hits the three. Great ball movement that time by Penn State. You imagine watching Jim O'Brien saying, hey, why, how come these guys won't go away? Yeah. Penn State's a good team, like we mentioned earlier. They've got a lot of weapons. They look for Red in the corner, drives, put it up, got fouled. Stevens didn't think so. He thought Red was the guilty party. You know, you had a great point during that last break, too, Jim, about Red. Red really needs to become a great foul shooter because he's going to get to the line an awful lot during his career. He's just got that knack. Put the ball on the floor here, hesitate, draw the foul. He can hang in the air, can alter the position of the ball. Move his body and he's he's going to get fouled an awful lot. Tonight he's had 13 attempts, hit seven of them. That is the 12th Ohio State miss. The second one, two point Ohio State lead. Under two minutes for regulation. Every time Penn State in the second half has gone inside, either Stevens or Booth, one of their post guys, something good has happened. Speaking of which, Booth down low. Uh, I jinxed him. Well, they had the right idea. Yeah, he, did. he had a he had a layup basically, but uh, good things have happened because Ohio State has trapped down. Penn State has done a great job of finding the open man after that trap down. That time they run a nice set play and had Calvin Booth for a layup. He just got a little too anxious. Well, one thing, if Ohio State gets us beyond the one possession game, Penn State can foul. Right. More of an advantage to take their chances at the line. Red down low, got it blocked. Penn State can tie with a three, take the lead. Crispin's wide open on the left side. And they'll use a timeout with a minute and 22 seconds to go. Each team with two full timeouts. And Penn State will use one of them right here. And a terrific finish apparently coming up in the final game at St. John Arena. You're watching Big Ten basketball. We're deep into the final game at St. John Arena in Columbus. Bruce Park Hill and Jim Barber. We've had a good one for you tonight. Moments ago, the Buckeyes on offense and Red trying to get to the basket. Got Calvin Booth off his feet, but a nice recovery that time by Titus Ivory, their defensive stopper. Heads up play. Big possession here for the Nittany Lions, Jim. Iowa has roared back to lead by eight. Again, a Hawkeye win, and Penn State will be in the seventh slot against Wisconsin in the Big Ten tournament. Right now, they've got some unfinished business here. Going into Booth on the step in. Nice job. Nice job. Good the play out of the timeout. Good execution. And the game is tied at 76, and now Ohio State will use a timeout. With 57.8 seconds to go. When we come back, the Buckeyes with the ball and the game tied. You're watching Big Ten College Basketball. Bruce, if you're Jim O'Brien, uh, do you work for a shot and get it quickly or relatively quickly so you don't allow Penn State the last look? Yeah, Jim, I, I think you take, you, you, uh, you set up something and you take your first good shot with the idea that if you come back, you need to make a stop and then try to get it again. What you'd like to do is have the ball in your hands last with a chance to, to win it. Right. 
And if Ohio State is able to do something in the next 15 seconds or so, next 15 or 20 seconds, that will happen. Otherwise, Penn State will get the ball and can work for the last shot. Fifty seconds for regulation. Penn Nothing State. materializing yet. Straight man to man, but they showed zone. That can